Hi, pretty brony. <laughs> uh, welcome to the second of my pony top tens. Last time I told you my top ten favourite ponies. Now, it's time for my take on the top ten best My Little Pony episodes. So let's get to it. Coming in at number ten, we have Putting Your Hoof Down. Now this the plot of this episode is very straightforward. Uh Fluttershy needs assertiveness training because she can't assert herself. In other words, she can't stand up for herself. So Rarity and Pinkie Pie advise her to go and see Iron Will. Who then ill advises her to start being a bully. And in the end makes her dislike herself. And in the end she actually does assert herself to Iron Will. Number nine. A friend indeed. In this episode, a new... Well, a donkey moves into Ponyville by the name of Cranky. And Pinky does everything she can to try and be his friend. But at first, he doesn't want her friendship. In the end... He is reunited with Matilda, and that's when he accepts Pinky's friendship. At number 8, Friendship is Magic, Parts 1 and 2. The premiere to the whole series. Twilight Sparkle, the studious student of... Princess Celestia is sent to Ponyville to, well, one, double check on the arrangements for the Summer Sun celebration, and two, to make some friends. Now, she doesn't want anything to do with making friends in the f- at first. Well, then, she meets the other members of the main, f- uh, the other main five. In turn, she encounters Pinkie Pie first, who then runs off because she's going to get a party ready for her. Then she encounters Applejack. Now, that's a funny... That's a funny introduction in itself, that one. (laughs) Um, Especially the scene where uh, Apple Bloom... Says to her, aren't you going to stay for brunch? And then she turns around and says, I'm sorry, we've got an awful lot to do. Anyway, after that she encounters Rainbow Dash. And then she encounters Rarity. And finally she encounters Fluttershy. Now, she at first she doesn't want to be their friend, but in the end... They do become friends. Yeah. Once they find out, they each represent an element of harmony. At <laughs> uh, number seven. We have Daring Don't. Now, in this episode, Rainbow Dash wants to help out Daring Do. Once they find out that is her actual name, and A.K. Yearling is just a pseudonym she's using to write her books. When they find that out, Rainbow Dash does everything she can to try and help Daring Do, but Daring Do doesn't want her help in the end. 
And yep, it turns out that Daring Do actually needs Rainbow Dash's help. And in the end, ends up thanking her for it. With an early copy of her next book. Hmm, can't be bad. At number six, Pinky Apple Pie. Now, uh, where, where do I start with this one? Okay, uh, Pinky discovers that she may be related to Applejack. So, with the Apple family, or actually she discovers she is related to Applejack. Uh, so, with the Apple family, they set off for the Pie family's residence. To see if they can find out the truth behind it or not. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, maybe. Because I think it, if I remember rightly, it turns out that they're not related. So... Anyway. At number six. Dragon Shy. Now, in this, the main six, accompanied, of course, by Spike, go off in pursuit of a dragon that's going to bring, I think it's a thousand years of smoke to Equestria if they don't get him to move out of his cave. So, they take it in turns, well, they go off to his cave and take it in turns to try and convince him to move out. None of the other five seem able to. So in the end, Fluttershy has to tell the dragon off for hurting her friends. <laughs> Leave it to Fluttershy to start showing her bravery right at that very moment. Uh. <laughs> Number five. The Stairmaster. Now, in this episode, Fluttershy offers to look after the Cutie Mark Crusaders while Rarity tries to fill out an important order. Or tries to fill an important order. And after being put to bed, they sneak out into the Everfree Forest. Which then causes Fluttershy to have to worriedly go in there herself. To try and find them. And she encounters a cockatrice. A mythological creature that looks like a chicken. That turns you to stone when you look at it. But, um... While well, telling it off, she demands that... It turns Twilight and one of her chickens, Elizabeth, Back to normal. And while well, countering... The cockatrice is there... With her own. To break the curse. And she does eventually get the Cutie Mark Crusaders back and take them back home. At number four, we have... Mystery on the Friendship Express. <laughs> now, in this episode from season two, Pinkie Pie is charged with taking... A cake to a contest in Canterlot, accompanied, of course, by her friends and Spike. 
And then the whole when when the cake gets bitten, the whole thing turns into a who done it pony style. <laughs> As they try to figure out who took a bite out of Pinky's cake, but then it comes to pass that everyone's cakes has been partially demolished. <laughs> Okay, number three. We have... The Best Night Ever. Now, this was the finale episode of season one, where the gang go to the Grand Galloping Gala, where it turns out not to be as they imagined it. Oh, no. Instead of hanging out with the Wonderbolts, Rainbow Dash doesn't end up. Which she's with them, but it doesn't turn out to be as she imagined it. Uh, Princess Celestia's too busy to pay attention to Twilight. Fluttershy has a bad time in the castle garden. Applejack doesn't make any sales. And so forth. The most depressing thing of all is Pinky realises that it's not the type of party for dancing at. Well, what is it then? A boring party? Well, but in the end, what turns out to be their best night ever was that they all got to be together. There you go. At number two, Ponyville Confidential. Now, this was the episode that I was introduced to the show with because, um, well, in this episode, the Cutie Mark Crusaders join the school newspaper, which is obviously headed by the then bully Diamond Tiara. It basically blackmails them. Into humiliating everyone else in Ponyville. And the humiliation obviously turns into, well, it would, anguish. Um, no one wants to talk to them after they do this, but when they put things right and quit the full free press, things turn out for the better. And yes, um, this is one of the only rare occasions in the series you actually hear Big Mac utter a full sentence. Okay, now before we get to number one, I'd like to give some honourable mentions. Four of them to be exact. Um, so, honourable mention number one, we have the Ticketmaster. Honourable mention number two. Wonderbolts Academy. Honourable mention number three, Rarity Takes Manhattan, and the last honourable mention will be Bad App One Bad Apple. Now to my number one, My Little Pony episode. It's Crusaders of the Lost Mark. Surprised, are you? <laughs> now, this is actually the turning point for quite a few characters. Not just the CMC, but Diamond Tiara as well. Because in this episode, the Cutie Mark Crusaders find out why Diamond Tiara was being a bully to him for not being, for being blank flanks. 
is her mum. Spoiled rich. And so she stands up to her mum. And outright says to them that the CMC are her friends. Or her. Yeah. And well it's, a, it's the ultimate feel good episode. Because the turning point here for the cru- for the Crusaders themselves is right when they stop, decide to stop thinking about trying to earn their cutie marks and help other young foals try to find theirs, they earn their cutie marks. After five years of trying whatever they can to get them and not succeeding, they finally succeed. That's why that's my number one episode now. Sorry, Ponyville Confidential, you've been dethroned. Anyway. (laughs) That's it for this top ten. Join me again on Friday for another new Pony Top Ten. Until then, it's goodbye, every brony.